This video will demonstrate the correct technique and procedure for administering intramuscular and subcutaneous injections. These procedures are commonly carried out to introduce small volumes of a drug into the system of a patient where oral medication cannot be tolerated or absorbed. Usually a volume of 1 ml or less will be injected subcutaneously, whilst larger volumes from 2 to 5 ml will be injected intramuscularly. Also size of needle depends slightly on patient size, but in general blue or green can be used for IM and blue for subcutaneous. Intramuscular injection sites commonly include the following. Mid anterior and mid lateral areas of the quadriceps, mid deltoid and upper outer quadrant of the gluteal muscles. The cuteal region is used less frequently nowadays due to the risk of damaging the sciatic nerve. The equipment required for this procedure will include the following. A syringe, a drawing up needle, a correctly sized needle for injection, commonly blue or green, a cotton wool ball, non-sterile gloves and a sharps container. In addition to the usual introduction and consent process, be sure to recheck whether the patient has any allergy to the drug you're about to deliver, as well as ensuring that the drug you have selected matches what is written on the prescription. You should also record the batch numbers and expiry date of the drug in a suitable location, usually a ward register or the patient's notes. Now identify a suitable site for injection, usually from one of the three previously mentioned. Once identified, be sure to thoroughly wash your hands. You may then begin to prepare your injection by drawing up the drug using the syringe and drawing up needle. Ensure you are wearing gloves when drawing up a drug. Once this has been done, proceed to removing the drawing up needle and attaching the injection needle, usually blue or green, depending on the size of the patient, being careful not to expose the needle until you are ready to inject. Stabilise the skin with your non-dominant hand. Current best practice suggests that it is not necessary to cleanse the target skin area with an alcohol wipe, provided the patient is clean. With your dominant hand, hold the syringe as though you would hold a dart and insert it into the skin at 90 degrees, almost to the hilt of the needle. Draw back on the plunger slightly to ensure that you have not entered a blood vessel. When you are confident that you are in the musculature, proceed to delivering the drug. For a large volume, wait several seconds before withdrawing the needle. Once you have withdrawn, apply pressure with a cotton wool ball and dispose of the sharp immediately. After a few moments of pressure, check the wound to assess bleeding. It is usually minimal. Check that your patient is comfortable and dispose of your equipment. After washing your hands, ensure you document everything in the notes correctly and on the prescription charts correctly. Subcutaneous injection sites commonly include the following. Upper outer arm, lower abdomen, upper outer thigh. They are generally given for smaller volumes or where a slower release is preferred. In addition to the usual introduction and consent process, be sure to recheck whether the patient has any allergy to the drug you're about to deliver, as well as ensuring that the drug you have selected matches what is written on the prescription. You should also record the batch numbers and expiry date of the drug in a suitable location usually a ward register or the patient's notes. Preparation is as for intramuscular injection with the following exceptions. Volume of drug will be smaller, usually 1 ml or less, and the injecting needle will be shorter, usually blue only. After identification of a suitable site, be sure to thoroughly wash your hands. 
You may then begin to prepare your injection by drawing up the drug using the syringe and drawing up needle whilst wearing gloves. Once this has been done, proceed to removing the drying up needle and attaching the injection needle. Stabilise the skin with your non-dominant hand. Current best practice suggests that it is not necessary to cleanse the target skin area with an alcohol wipe, provided the patient is clean. With your dominant hand, insert the needle into the skin at 45 degrees. It is not necessary to aspirate with a subcutaneous injection. Once you have withdrawn, apply pressure with a cotton wool ball and dispose of the sharp immediately. After a few moments of pressure, check the wound to assess bleeding. It is usually minimal. Check that your patient is comfortable and dispose of your equipment. After washing your hands, ensure you document everything in the notes correctly and on the prescription charts correctly. In summary, you have witnessed the correct technique for intramuscular and subcutaneous injections. Note that the main differences between the two procedures are the requirement for aspiration, different volumes and needle sizes, angle of injection and different target sites. Also note that you should be wary of using a target site that has already been heavily used, for example the abdomen in an insulin-dependent patient. Repeated skin trauma can lead to lipohypertrophy.